Hi, pals. Thank you to everyone who keeps us rocking the 80s every week. If you'd like to support us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash go with the heat. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm Joe. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, different episode from your Go With The Heat podcast. We're clearing the deck. Everything's on hold. We just finished bad timing. Okay, you've heard enough about bad timing. We, it's pretty obvious we didn't like that episode. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to do here is, is that the amnesia arc is over. So we've been through all of them now. We went from hackmen to hacking people in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about this amnesia arc as a whole, because not only was this a big deal for Miami Vice, this was a gigantic deal for TV in the 80s. And this is one of the main reasons why we chose to do this podcast about Miami Vice, why we started this show about something we had never seen before, minus Melissa. <laughs> the reason why we wanted to do this is because of how influential Miami Vice was on TV in the 80s and TV since then. And the amnesia arc is something that is that big a deal. So what we wanted to do was is look at it as a whole. Where do we stand now that the amnesia arc is done? It's going to come up here and there. They're going to mention about how insane Sonny is. <laughs> was <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about this thing as a whole and what does it mean for us who have now been through this and we can look back as the whole arc so that's what the goal is for this episode is for us to take a deeper look into the amnesia arc i guess it all started one day on a boat when we were sunbathing <laughs> and uh it kind of exploded <laughs> well, I'm going to step it back even one further and say that the amnesia arc actually started way back on episode 21 of season four in Deliver Us from Evil when Hackman kills Caitlin and then Sonny kills him at the end of that episode. So this is easily the most disturbing episode of Ice. A man that Sonny got off a of death row comes back, murders his wife, and then Sonny goes in cold blood to take law into his own hands and kill Hackman. It's a lot of judgment being yeah. thrown around here. <laughs> yeah, and then he planted a gun on him. <laughs> oh, no. don't start that again. The internet's on my side with that, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the question I have for you guys, then. Is this episode really part of the amnesia arc? Can you point to this episode and say, this is the birth of the amnesia? It's tough, because we don't know how much time passes between him killing Hackman on the island and him being undercover on the boat. In, in the beginning of Mirror Image, they say it's been months, but they don't give it like an exact time frame. I didn't, I didn't know they said yeah, months. I so thought it had been weeks. It, it might have been weeks. I think he was saying weeks, like Tubbs has been like i think tub says in the beginning when they're sitting at that table he's like you know it's, it's only been a couple of weeks you sure you don't want to take some more time off so i i'm torn on this i feel like it doesn't pertain to the amnesia storyline because it, i mean they don't talk about hackman ever again and actually even in like you know i don't even think he has that that part where she gets killed in his amnesia in the amnesia storyline where he remembers her does he he doesn't i like there's no it's not like him shooting. Yeah, oh, I don't oh, think no, I think there's there is. Sorry, sorry, John, but I think there is a part where they show him shooting Hackman and walking away, maybe, but not Caitlin. She's not in it, so maybe that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm not sure. I thought she might have showed up in one of the montages, but you might be right. It's uh, she's in a um, montage, but it's not no her real. being killed. It's them being like in love and saying goodbye to each other and you know whatever like that stuff it's not her being murdered where he's like holding her you think if you have if you have an amnesia and you're gonna have like a flashback it would be like him holding her in his yeah. arms where she's dying it, you know? <laughs> we're assuming that a couple of weeks have gone by so he's had a proper amount of time to mourn um, you know two weeks is enough to get over your wife dying you should just be done <laughs> That was about the amount of time they actually spent together during exactly. their marriage, about two weeks. <laughs> Earlier, so, in I, I know what you're getting at, Dom, is that you're trying to say that th this is the moment like that he started to turn. And then after the amnesia, that's what threw him over the edge. Because I'm going to say earlier in the episode, he says he never wants to be that cop that becomes so jaded that he only sees good and bad and is willing to take the law into his own hands. And he sees himself as judge, jury, and executioner. And then he finds himself in that exact same scenario at the very end of the episode. And so what, from my perspective, the rest of the arc, he continues to question if mur the murdering Sonny is ever going to come back. And I think it all boils back to when he murders Hackman. Because he that says might that... might be where he started to get a taste for blood. 
at the end of the episode, we're left with Sonny committing this crime. We're leaving the viewer to decide. Okay, he didn't commit a crime. Let's get this straight. <laughs> well, no, he totally did. He so that's what I'm saying is that you're left as a viewer to decide: is there such a thing as a justified killing? Yeah, and we've already decided it was justified. <laughs> there, we're done. We can move it's on. It's not from that. justified. He clearly planted a gun oh, so that stop. it would. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that it's a turning point for Sonny where because he was always like a by the book kind of guy. Yes, he would fuzz the line a and little bit. And fuzz a lot of women along the way. <laughs> <laughs> but he would never take the law into his own hands. His goal was always like to arrest them. He always wanted them to be punished in the court of law. This is the first time where he really does something where he goes above and beyond outside of his scope as a police officer. That is true. But what Hackman is saying was true also that he was never going to get him. He was never going to get, they were never going to get him the legal way. And he had a gun. Oh, well, he's dead now. Too bad. <laughs> no but, one's going to cry at his funeral because no one's alive to be there. So his wife's dead too. Were, <laughs> just, were, were they just not going to be able to get him the legal way because he just wasn't a very good cop? Like, is that how... Hackman convinced <laughs> yeah. him to get him out in the first place. No, because he was on that. Like he was he, just picking on, on a really bad cop. No, because what he said was that basically the the officials on that island were crooked, and he had paid them off, and they were never going to agree. They don't extradite, so that country, wherever he was in, they, whatever made up country they made up for, <laughs> for Vice, they don't extra, <laughs> they don't work with the United States to extradite people. So, and Hackman went there on purpose and knew and bought that giant house and paid off the officials. So he knew, like, there's no way they're gonna, you can get me. And he, he counted on that Sonny was a good cop and, like, the, the type of cop that would get him off <laughs> of death row. He thought he, he had wrongfully I, I feel like he should have invested in the bodyguard then. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, okay, so this gets us to mirror image. And, John, like you're saying, like, we're going to blow Sonny Crockett right out of his brain. <laughs> That's how we're going to do this. In Mirror Image, Sonny is lamenting in the very beginning his life being back on the force. He's saying, like, please leave me alone. Don't ask me, like, how I'm doing and stuff. Like, let me just get back to work. But the thing that gets me here is that he wants to continue as if nothing happened. Now, he's the only one that knows that he killed Hackman. No one else knows. There's, they saw that Hackman's dead. And everyone's like, okay, where was Sonny for the last 12 hours? Sonny's trying to do everything he can. To make sure that it's like, hey, I'm just continuing on my life as normal. But he's clearly not normal. I mean, he's not. <laughs> no, he's just hanging around in that really, really, really big house that he still, that they <laughs> own together. He totally didn't murder that Spending person. Spending his on times island. on his private dock on his boat. <laughs> he's the same old James Crockett, vice detective, right? He's better. <laughs> <laughs> he finally got rid you of mean he can actually afford his cars and clothes <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm gonna bring it back to hackman here is sunny's amnesia possible without hackman no i don't what think I was, so this is what john was getting at too so john what do you think after hackman is it possible that when he gets blowed up is it possible for him to turn into the murderous pirate that is <laughs> sunny <laughs> finally the murderous pirate <laughs> yeah well you know that's what, when we were going through that episode, the question I kept asking was, who is Sonny Burnett? Because we see him go undercover as Sonny Burnett in a multitude of different covers. You know, sometimes he's a boxing promoter. Sometimes he's a middleman. Sometimes he's security. It was just curious to see who, in, in Crockett's mind, who Burnett was. Because obviously, with the amnesia, he... he comes back and he believes he's whoever that cover story is but he you know he had his own version of who he thought this side character he plays is as a criminal and maybe maybe killing hackman in cold blood is what made it so easy for him to become burnett the hitman yeah i mean i agree i think that he couldn't become he doesn't i don't think he would go that far with the amnesia if it wasn't for, I don't think, but see, I don't, I, I don't think that it was killing Hackman that did it. I think it was losing Caitlin that did it, that her dying and then losing her is what pushed him over the edge emotionally. So like, look, think about it. He has nothing to go back to. So it's okay for his brain to be <laughs> scrambled when he's blown up because he has nothing to go back to. Mm -hmm. He has a job that he's going to continue to do who has no real identity. 
He has no wife. You know, he has no relationship with his kid. He has tubs. That's it. I mean, like, that, like I said, apparently that wasn't enough because he tries to kill him <laughs> several times. Uh -huh. <laughs> when he gets amnesia, we uh, he could be any kind of criminal. He just starts killing people on his own. It goes to the max, which is why I'm asking about Hackman. And most you got a good, good point. It's the trauma of Caitlin that she's killed. Yeah. And then it, he lost his child and then he lost mm -hmm. her and then he's lost everything. So maybe in his, in his brain, that's why it took forever for him to come back around. It took a long time for him to remember things because he, in his subconscious was like he didn't have anything to go back to. His life was over now. He had nothing, which is hard to believe because, you know, they never saw each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't hang out. They never saw each other. She was never around. But hey, you know, it's, just, it's, it's pretty much just like it was before. <laughs> he says a bunch throughout the entire amnesia arc that, he deserves to be with the junkies and lowlifes. But I, I also take that as that he feels most comfortable with the junkies and lowlifes, too. That it's not just what he deserves. That's actually where he belongs. And if you top that with, my wife was killed, plus I killed another person, not because of any other reason other than for revenge, then um, this must be who I am. So when he gets amnesia, then it makes total sense to him. Is it is that is it that, or I'm going to bring up something later where it's like with that same case. So let's talk about Hostile Takeover then. This is when Evil Burnett and the Evil Burnett that we love takes <laughs> over. Ponytail. <laughs> right? That's Ponytail oh, yeah. From my perspective, I think he takes everything that he learned over the years of being on the force, not to say of what of who he was as Burnett, but all the other junkies and lowlifes that he dealt with all bought, like concentrated into a single person. He takes it all and he that's how he becomes the ultimate criminal, right? He's like a mastermind now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's he and he starts the uh, criminal union. So my question then is how did we get here? How is Sonny so twisted? And we we're talking about it a little bit about Caitlin and about super concentrated where he's got all this experience with dealing with a whole bunch of low lives. I would say, again, it's Hackman because he doesn't want to be the baddest drug dealer. He wants the world to burn. Yeah, he wants. Yeah, that's true. It's not just like he wants all the money. He wants like all the power, too. And he wants the world to be. Like he doesn't give, he doesn't care about anything else. In Hostile Takeover, I, I I see what you're saying, but when he becomes the boss, like he doesn't, it I didn't get that feeling. It, it but it's almost like you're right, like he's using all of the stupid mistakes that in the other criminal masterminds that they shot and killed in the previous episodes because that because they don't like to arrest people much um <laughs> too much, are full. I was gonna say too much paperwork <laughs> but yeah it's like he's using that to really go and undermine and take over and so what's fun about this episode is that he is super devious like he has got a whole plan and i think that's more that's more seeing crockett coming through burnett is that he immediately identifies evil Burnett. So uh, identifies he is determined as the problem and what he needs to do to fix it to become boss. And he enacts this whole grand plan that just everything works perfectly. Gets the guy's son to kill his own dad while he steals his girlfriend and takes over the entire business. I think this is Sonny Crockett, the undercover cop with the plan stings and stuff like this is him bleeding through in the burnett he's just so efficient at being a criminal then that brings us into sunny burnett montana and morris the panther <laughs> the single greatest guest star in the history of ice <laughs> <laughs> what i keep coming back to in both hostile takeover and redemption in blood is you're right how he, if efficient he is at taking everything down but you can see like he gets no joy out of doing it he doesn't celebrate any wins or anything just once where he spends the night with celeste and then it ends up being the end at the end of hostile takeover where they kill the son but he never really celebrates anything that's why i keep coming back to like what you're saying also like his trauma of caitlin being killed and then the hackman deal that he just wants the, the world to burn he's just going to tear everything down he's going to attack every everyone that's why he's a shoot first, ask questions yeah. later. Like he's just gonna murder everyone. Yeah, he doesn't. You're right. He doesn't get any enjoyment out of anything he's doing. That's what it seems like, anyway. He's not like. What does he really get out of it? There's no enjoyment. There's no like. He's in power. Okay, great. But he doesn't actually have any money. 
he's living in that guy's house basically he just took over his life but he's not having any fun or enjoying it it's just something that he feels like he has to do because because he's because I mean, Celeste he's evil. isn't that bad <laughs> yeah i know because but because he's evil brunette he feels like okay I've got, this is what i do but it never feels right to him that's clearly what they're trying to say this never feels right to him this life is never right the right place for him he never feels this is what he said what he was meant to be doing that's why he like does it like he goes through the motions. He's very methodical. He's like a puppet master and he does it. But but in the end, it's not really what he wants because he's not really it's not him. He doesn't remember who he is. What do you think happened to Celeste? Did, did she get to keep the panther or her <laughs> and the panther? Did they move to an apartment? <laughs> I have a question about both Polly and Celeste, like where both of them ended up. Did Polly like go to work for Elgato after or like where did where did Polly go? Well, either way, he left <laughs> Polly like, because he he like betrayed them and went to the other side. So she, if she was Manolo's I secretary. mean, she works for Elgato, right? Because she was high up in the Manolo Maybe game. Maybe she's dead. <laughs> she I don't know. There's a little bit unresolved there because this episode ends with El Gato. Or no, I'm sorry. The next episode ends with El Gato meeting Morris the Panther. <laughs> so, but then after that, Sonny just starts showing up at the OTV. And you never hear anything more about Celeste or Morris the Panther or Criminal Union or what's going on with that. And are they on strike? Did they... Uh, you know, did they vote a new president? <laughs> yeah, all we know about Celeste is that she was leaving somewhere. She's packing her stuff and she's going to where she was going to go on. She was going to find somebody else to take care of her, basically, is what she was saying. He was saying, like, you could go get a job and do all this. And she's like, could I? Could I really do all those things? I don't think so. <laughs> I've got a panther, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not once is the word amnesia used in the entire arc. I know, right? And the entire Vice team is convinced that he's not right just based on Tubbs' impression when he talks to Sonny. Yeah, they're not sure if he keeps saying, like, he's he turned, he's turned, and, you know, but they But don't. it's all based on Tubbs, and, like, what Tubbs is like, no, I don't think he is. There's something not right with him, whatever that means. Yeah, they don't use amnesia <laughs> until later on when they're talking to, like, Crazy uh, wiper syndrome. <laughs> They don't use amnesia until the doctors are talking about him at the hearings. Then it's like, he had amnesia. Because he was obviously a crime lord. Wouldn't he have a lot of really important criminal information for the police after he came back? Shouldn't they have been able to take down uh, all Plenty the other... of people, yeah, you'd think. But he didn't remember that stuff. <laughs> He doesn't remember any of that stuff, but he remembered that Morris was in that other room at the end of that episode. So. Well, that's short-term memory, not long-term. <laughs> Burnett's no snitch. <laughs> Take all that shit with me to the grave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, dude, that's kind of what he did, too. At the trial and everything. I don't remember anything. I was conveniently amnesia <laughs> I still don't know how, in, in, with Amnesia never being used and the Vice team never being aware of exactly what was happening with Sonny, how Stan can ever forgive him for punching him in the back of the head. Like, I don't even know what's happening here. <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean, what do you mean Stan? What about Tubbs? Like, Tubbs didn't know he had amnesia for sure. That's another I interesting part here is that Tubbs always believes that he can turn Sonny, but Sonny never turns because of Tubbs. No. <laughs> and he tries to murder him no. twice. And, but what's in oh, the second well. time he does let up a little bit. <laughs> it was Tubbs' love that turned him around. You see, that's what I'm saying. It's like he never cared. He doesn't care about nobody. That's why I'm saying he's wanted the world to burn. Like there was no one that was gonna flip him. What ended up flipping him was that well, I mean first of all, they killed Sonny Burnett by blowing him up in that limo explosion. <laughs> they tried to kill him. <laughs> and then don't know that because they, they killed Burnett. Oh yeah, they like, killed Burnett yeah, because he, he came out he, of it after he, that. He yeah. never comes back. Um, but he just, so he just comes out of it and he does see the flashbacks all the time. So like Tubbs told me he loved them and he sees Caitlin and his flashbacks, stuff like that. But there wasn't, he like woke up and it was, oh Tubbs, oh I've made a huge mistake. He, he remembers Caitlin when he sees Celeste in that hotel room. Who are you? But then he flips right back and he sets it up. But there was never a so, something that he says or he does to show, thank God for all of my friends <laughs> for snapping me out of this. Um, well, let's just talk about he doesn't remember anybody else but Tubbs. <laughs> <So> <laughs> except for Castillo. <laughs> like, but there's no flashbacks of there's no flashbacks of Stan. There's no flashbacks of Gina or you Trudy. Give me some flashbacks of some of his other partners, like Evan and all the other ones. There was. So like, oh, that's right. Evan did make an appearance with because, the other ones. Yeah. It was the one that Hackman killed. That guy just disappears. Like, yeah, he never gone. Yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah. And no Jimmy Smith. How do you feel what if you're hell? dead, though? I mean, come on. Gina was his booty call for, like, the first three seasons. 
<laughs> might still be. <laughs> I mean, we all saw that episode yeah. with uh, Mosca. Mm-hmm. They seemed like they were still, you know. <laughs> yeah, he was still, yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't even, he doesn't remember Stan at all. Like, he's not even in the scene where they where he's walking on the beach and he's got the coffins and then there's tubs in the coffin and he sees Marty. No wonder too. Stan's developing a, a gambling problem. I know. <laughs> no one cares about him. No one cares about him. <laughs> You didn't even have amnesia now flashbacks about you, <laughs> All right, so this is the one I'm most excited about. I know this is weird. He's like to waving his arms around over his head right now. <laughs> I know it's weird to say I'm excited to talk about bad timing, but th- I'm excited to talk about bad timing. Because <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the episode, at the very end, so this is the end of the amnesia arc. At the Here we go. <laughs> bad timing is it. He has to disappear, has to get on his hog. Go right off. <laughs> it's <into> rental. The- <laughs> he talks continuously about he's always concerned about Burnett coming back, yeah. that was really him, if he deserves the low lives, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the episode, yes, he is being hunted. You see a moment where he's going to kill one of the killers. He's got him, he's strangling him, he's holding him uh, under the water, and you get this close-up frame of Sonny's face. For me, I see right then that he has to stop himself, which is the opposite of the way Sonny Crockett would actually be. Sonny Crockett would never let himself get to that point. He has, you see himself like come to the realization of like what he's doing. He has to stop himself. To me, that is signaling 100% for sure Sonny Burnett changed Sonny Crockett's life forever. And he is haunting around in there. He's like the Babadook. Just cruising around in the shadows. You never know when he's going to make an appearance. <laughs> that he has changed. And he had to stop himself from just killing that person. And yes, okay, I understand like he was being hunted. He was de- de- defending himself. But Sonny Crockett, that was never an issue. Sonny Burnett, he, now that that person has existed, he needs to create a wall and know that that's a part of him now. And Melissa's very busy rolling her uh-huh. eyes at me as I'm describing it. Because that's, it's not... <laughs> I took it as that that scene because the whole episode is him doubting whether or not he can ever go back to being who he was before, whether his friends will trust him. Is he really this person in the inside? Like, has he really turned on the inside? And I took that scene as they were telling you, like, no, he has not turned because he didn't kill him. And he has a realization like, no, I'm not going to kill this guy. And he stops and leaves and he goes away and he, and doesn't even kill the other guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so. That was supposed to be the rule. That, that's what I took that as. They had to put that in there. They had to make a point. There has to be some point where, where Sonny realizes, like, I can go back to being a cop and do my thing because I'm not a murderer. Mm. I can stop myself from murdering somebody. And I did. I didn't kill that person and I had the chance. And so now that's when you're supposed to go like, oh, okay, Sonny's going to go be okay. Eventually, he'll go back to being a cop and be normal. I don't think it's that deep at all. I think he got on his hog and went on his trip <laughs> and found that little bar and decided, you know what? Maybe I won't be a cop. Maybe I'll be a bouncer like Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> he could. I mean, let's get this straight. He's no Patrick Swayze. Oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Don Johnson. But you cannot be Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. I'm sorry. <laughs> Saying he can't get away with being Roadhouse? No, he can't. <laughs> I think she's like the wind, just touched Melissa <laughs> deeper than we thought. <laughs> hey, don't trifle with my love for Patrick Swayze, okay? <laughs> that man is deceased. <laughs> Nobody could do anything better than him. <laughs> <laughs> and I do love Don Johnson, but you know, the same. He can no roadhouse. <laughs> I just keep coming back to that scene. And I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, Melissa, but I keep coming back to it is that um, the opposite is that he has to question every one of his moves now because he doesn't know he it's signaling that Sonny Burnett is lurking there. And if he lets it happen, he will just it'll just go. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could see where you're saying that. But as you but as you go further on in the episodes, it never comes back up like that. He's afraid he's whatever. I mean, obviously, you know, the episode, <laughs> but it never comes back up. It's just not a thing. So I'm saying that obviously it's not. we don't know that. I know. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I do know it. <laughs> <laughs> Future Melissa knows. I think this might be important. The episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all the episodes multiple times. So. <laughs> okay, so let's give our final thoughts on this entire arc. So let's go give our final ones and sum this all up. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit di- different final thoughts. We're going to keep it open and kind of talk about everything 
as a whole instead of just trying to sum it all up in a single few sentences. I'm going to start with something that's going to be controversial, okay? And I'm just <laughs> setting it up. Everyone take it how you want to. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be controversial. You can find me on Twitter. Find me specifically. Don't haunt everyone else. <laughs> Not me. I think the amnesia arc ruined Vice. Now I'm going to prove it. Yeah. No, <laughs> from Hackman to bad timing. From delivers from evil to bad timing. That's uh one, two, three, four, five total episodes. Five of six episodes because in between there is heart of the night. The rest of the cast of Miami Vice basically disappears. They're here and there, and they're key parts of the story when something comes up. But for the most part, they're done, and you don't really care about what's happening with them. All that matters is what's happening with Sonny and Tubbs. But everyone else, the ladies, Castillo, Stan, like no one else matters is what's happening with Miami Vice. And who knows what they're up to. And we find out later that Stan's got a gambling problem. That's what he's been up to. And he's still grieving from the loss of, of Larry. So because of this arc and how long it lasts and how invested we are in these in the Sonny and what his story is, that the rest of the cast just disappears and it's really hard to come back to them and suddenly care about what's happening in their lives i see where you come from and i kind of and i kind of agree with you especially because we don't immediately go back to the whole group we get a couple castillo episodes mixed in before we wrap up the amnesia arc and then the next one is another castillo episode after we go this big block of where it's just sunny and a little bit of tubs and we don't get the rest of the main cast, then we come back and we, we only focus on Castillo. And so we really don't get a full episode of, of everyone, you know, the girls pitching in and, and Stan pitching in a vice vice episode until like halfway through the fifth season. Uh, I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I, I see where you're coming from because it, you did spend, like you said, like five episodes just focusing on two characters in the show and just to be clear me and john haven't seen the rest of season five so we don't know what's coming i'm making a conjecture yeah. opinion not knowing how the rest of the season goes yes and it, and based off of like if you were just to take it at face value for what you've seen i could understand where you would say like okay yeah this this should have been the end like this is it you ruined it but because now we focus so much on sunny for so long and then now it's like well what else could these people do that would make it so you care <laughs> like what happens to them <laughs> but i don't agree because i've seen i know obviously you guys haven't so you don't know but i've seen the, the rest of the episodes and i don't agree because without that, that storyline you wouldn't get what you get in the future which is you know there's i mean i'm not going to spoil it but there's lots of other storylines that focus on lots of other but people but would you say that we get in the future is what kills the show and then that then by proxy if we wouldn't get that without the amnesia story arc that technically it would it did kill the show no i think that uh, season four proxy. killed the show my my theory and has always been that it has nothing to do with season five that they knew that the show was going to go off or that, that season five was it season four killed the show <laughs> the cows the, the cows damn, killed the show. You really the hate Jamaican Caitlin, popsicles. Huh? Let's let's put the blame where that goes here, okay? Jamaican popsicles, the bull semen, <laughs> the stupidity of all that killed the show. Peanut butter and James Brown <laughs> that killed the show. And so what you're saying is, what you really wanted to be watching is Dynasty or True Crime. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I'm saying is that Amnesia, if only, if anything, the Amnesia storyline makes Vice better than it ever was. The Amnesia storyline is the best part of Vice. It's the best thing that happens to Vice. Like, it, I know, and it focuses on Sunny, and it focuses on Tubbs, but it is what it is. The, there's nothing better on Vice than that storyline. And I get it that it probably, uh. if you haven't seen the rest of it, you're like, okay, well, I don't really care because the story, because it was so good and now it's done. But that I don't feel that way because I've seen the rest of it and I feel like the the, the rest of season five is valid is valid and it makes it makes sense and it hits home and you get you it wraps it up. There's no like unanswered questions left. I haven't seen the rest of season five. I don't know where the show ends off, but I almost felt like you could have just ended the show right then and there. I agree with Melissa that the amnesia arc is probably the best episodes or best arc 
that we've seen on the show so far. I really liked Sonny Burnett, the criminal. And I think NBC could have just spun that right off in the Sonny, Sonny Burnett, criminal, kingpin. Just goodbye to the rest of everybody. Yeah, I mean, I agree, too, that it could have been left. They could have left it right at that. And it could have been that would be the end of it. And it would have been an it would have been a substantial ending, you know, like that's it. Like this is how it, it could end mm-hmm. off. Like he still thinks he's Burnett, and then that's you never he never goes back. And the, as I mentioned when we finished Re- Redemption and Butter, so like this feels like it should have been one more episode where they should have had them finish off him and his amnesia and then gone back and did one more episode for Elgato. Then they could have done one more, which all points to what NBC said when season four ended, like, okay, let's do a limited season five. Yeah. And then end the show and the, but Michael Mann and all the like, writers stuff it off back and said, let us do a whole season. I think they ended it right here, spun it off into Burnett the criminal. I mean, I know all the rest of the actors probably would have been pissed, but we, they could guest star on there. You know, <laughs> Trudy stops by for an episode. It would have been really interesting if they would have left him just as the permanent bad guy. That's what I thought, like, in my head, like, if they just left that, him be. That's what guy. I'm saying. But, yeah, that's I mean, I'm I saying. think. Just left him as the bad guy and spun off as a new show with Crockett as the bad guy. But I think he didn't want to do Vice anymore. So, like, as far as I'm. I don't care what he wants to do. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> it matters is to ma- him. <laughs> this is fan fiction. This is imaginary. <laughs> I mean, yeah, now that now in retrospect, you might go back and be like, yeah, I should have done something else. Maybe we should have done this or that. But, you know, hindsight's. <laughs> 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 I have one more point that I'll make on like where we are wh- when we end the amnesia arc is that we are so so far away from MTV cops, which is what the show started as. Yes, <laughs> fashion is toned down, high life is toned down, music is toned down, like everything is scaled way back. We are so we are so far away from MTV cops. That Miami Vice feels compelled in Lion of Fire, which is an episode we just watched recently. Uh, we're not recording these in the future. Get out of here. <laughs> so who said that? <laughs> what? That they felt like they might have a spinoff show with younger cops that make their debut on Miami Vice. That would make a new show on NBC to compete with a little show called 21 Jump Street that would involve police officers infiltrating a high school. But they end up pulling the plug on it. Thank after, God. Uh, like three, they appear in like three episodes. Thank God. <laughs> they pull the plug on it and decide not to do it. That's how far away from MTV oh, I mean, Cops we are. We have gone from MTV Cops. We have come dangerously close to homicide life on the street and on order. We are seeing the evolution of Dick Wolf and the I don't give a crap of Michael Mann. <laughs> like i don't care put whatever you want on and i think the last thing that we'll say here that i'll say and i'll i'll let you guys also wrap up is that you guys are 100 percent right this is the best of Miami Vice. these five episodes combined like together you put them in a string all together they're the best that vice did this is the best episodes this is the best of vice this is everything is the best which makes it into an Infinity War problem. <laughs> yeah, what do you come back from that? <laughs> what do you do? How, how do you come back with this? And I guess like what Melissa is saying is that they will. And by the time we get to free fall, it's all going to make sense. We're going to have a better, richer story of how Vice comes to an end and why they make the, the decisions that they do at the end of the at the end of the series. This is so amazing. They cover so much stuff. Burnett is so evil. It is so great. I don't know how you come back from it. No, I mean, I agree. It is the best. But I will say that the stories that come after, they are fair and they're needed to wrap up the rest of the show. <laughs> we need to know what ha- Like, It wouldn't be fair. if they- It would not be a fair to the rest of the cast of Miami Vice if you're like, you know what? Let's just wrap it up with... with- <laughs> <laughs> Burnett's a jerk. He kills everybody. We don't care about you, Gina. We don't care about you, Tubbs. We don't care about you... Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, said. everyone but Don Johnson had it in their contract that they couldn't do other stuff while we were doing this. But exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Let's, yeah, exactly. So it's it's fair and it's needed, and you'll get closure. That's what you get for the rest of the season is you get closure, and it's needed. Like I know that some some people say like, "Oh, it wasn't a very good season," and what I don't agree with that. I think it was, and you get as a, as a fan of Miami Vice, I am satisfied with what happens. That there's no like, oh, why would you do that? You know, like, why would you do this to this character or that character? You get closure on everything. I feel like knowing that the series is coming to a close, I feel like I've, I have pulled the journey far enough with Crockett's character at this point. Like, like whatever leftover throughout the rest of the season with him, like, I, I've come far enough. I want to see now, I want to see the girls. I want to see the, the gambling arc with Stan and Tubbs. I, like, I want to see how this 
the series ends with them. Like Melissa's saying, like it wouldn't have been fair to them to end on the am- amnesia arc. So I'm, I'm interested to see how the rest of the season says goodbye to the rest of the cast. Because I feel like we're kind of done emotionally with uh, with Crockett. Like at, at this point, writing's kind of on the wall. Like you feel like like he's he's either going to burn out or he's going to figure it out. So, but I, I just, I can't wait to see what, what happens, you, you know, does, does Castillo get promoted? Does Tubbs go back to New York? Does Gina kill another John? <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you loved and enjoyed this episode. We took a moment to step aside from go- doing the episode in each week to really come back and talk more about this amnesia arc because it is such a gigantic storyline. So we had to come back. We had to give it its due. Look at the entire thing. Kind of sum things up. Get our opinions in there. Some of them are harsh. I said I was going to be controversial. We'd love to hear from you. Email us. Go with the heat at gmail.com. There's lots of you who have seen this show many, many times. And you know what's coming into the future. I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to email us and tell us like where you stand on how Amnesia changed Vice. And if you thought it was for the good or for ill. Email us. Go with the heat at gmail.com. Be sure to check out that website. Go with the heat.com. Check out all the ways to support us. We would love your support on Patreon. Believe it or not, season five, we're counting down the episodes really fast. We would love to keep doing this show. And we'd love to do that with your support. Check out that Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal.